Hey, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. This is HD StarCraft, and I'm here to bring you guys another StarCraft 2 broadcast direct from the IPL5 Korean Regional Replay Pack. Uh, and I know in my last cast I said, well, I just woke up and it's Tuesday, but uh, I, <laughs> after I uploaded the cast, I found out, well, actually, it's Wednesday, HD. So uh, my fail on that part, like I said, my schedule is all whacked out right now. But uh, it is actually Thursday now because, uh, yeah, obviously there wouldn't be a two-day time skip. But uh, don't ever ask HD for the schedule or the calendar. Anyways, this is going to be TSL Hyun as the Red Terran at a Red Zerg at the top right-hand corner of Daybreak, and his opponent is going to be Marine King Prime, the Blue Terran at the bottom left. So it will be another Terran versus Zerg. Um, and, you know, Marine King doing pretty well so far this season. Uh, in the last cast, I mentioned that he was slumping a bit, and what I meant by that was he he didn't make it all the way, I guess, to the round of eight that I was hoping he would, but, uh, you know, that, I guess that doesn't exactly mean he's slumping. It just means that he isn't performing to his fullest potential. I think he got knocked out by Teja or something like that, so no shame there. Um, still a very talented player, and he's playing against Hyun here, who I believe right now is in code A. And uh, this should be a pretty interesting match. Another Korean versus Korean, obviously, from the Korean regional. I do apologize if you guys hear, like, a clinkering sound in the background. It's my dog, Haley. She's just, like, really happy right now that I woke up. And she's always excited when I'm casting StarCraft 2. Who wouldn't be? Um, and I will go ahead and set myself to busy. All right. So... You know, Daybreak, big time map, and, uh, you know, usually you see a lot of macro games on this one. We have a CC first coming out from the Terran player here, which, it, this is one of those maps where you can command center first, you know? And, and you look at the map and you think, well, it's not that big, but it actually is, because if you look at the middle of the map, there's these convoluted... Um, areas where you can't just go directly across. You're gonna have to take this upwards triangle or the downwards triangle, and so it really adds a lot of travel time to the map, making it a lot, making it seem a lot bigger than it actually is. Um, and that's what we kind of see. That's why we kind of see players always going for fast expansions. In fact, look at this: Hyun going for double hatch before spawning pool. And you know what? That is the correct response when you see a Terran go command center first. If you want to be economically ahead, that is the one and only time where you can pull off the savior, where you can pull off the double hatch before pool, and it is actually faster, more economical to do that. Obviously, it's super risky if the Terran isn't going command center first, because then he'll obviously be going barracks first, and he'll have marines in your base, and then you'll be, uh, what, what do I do, you know? So that's very smart from Hyun. He sent out the drone scout. Uh, at the right time to check to see for a CC first on a map where it's likely for Terrans to go command center first and he kind of reacted how you would expect him to react and now you know he's gonna keep that eco lead um, and I really like the playstyle the decision making from Hyun he's also added on the gas after the pool so you don't you don't want to fall behind in gas either you know the early speed upgrade is just too essential in Terran versus or, or Zerg versus Terran um, we also have double gas coming up Following the command center, that is uh, usually what Terrans want to do. They want to get the double gas going pretty quickly here so they don't fall behind in tech either. And uh, we'll see what happens from here for both players, but it certainly looks like we're going to have a lot of eco to start things off, you know, with the double the double hatch and the CC first. That's It's it's daybreak, you know, so strap yourselves in. It's going to be a long Terran versus Zerg here, and uh, my pleasure to bring it to you guys. Well, while the build-up starts happening, though, I was going to ask you guys, have you guys been keeping up with the GSL? Because last night we had Dongrigu play Naniwa and uh, Nesty play against Byun, uh, a.k.a. Ghost King. Very, very good matches, especially the last set. Uh, highly advise you guys to check it out if you haven't already, um, but I'm sure most of you guys have. And uh, there's that SCV just checking to confirm whether or not that hatchery did go up. And, you know, seeing the hatch there at six minutes in, that's just the borderline, I think. That was the right time to scout in the, and check, did the Zerg player go for a double hatch? Because if it wasn't double hatch, that hatchery would probably still be morphing right now. I think it would plop down around 620. So, um, that's pretty good timing from Marine King, and now he's going to know for sure that the Zerg did play Eco, and that he doesn't have to concern himself with something like an early... Zergling, run by, uh, Baneling bus, Roachling, or anything like that. But there is a Baneling nest coming up. Pretty typical, though, for Zergs to get the Baneling nest around this time. Uh, speed is about to finish as well. Do note the great placement of Overlords from Hyun, um, who 
has him placed over every single one of the, like I, I like to call it the Overlord parking spots. This one gets a nice breath of fresh air under its tentacles, a nice breeze under his shorts. The other ones are like jealous, they don't get that nice breeze. Uh, but um, one interesting note here for Hyun is he's actually a former, I don't know if you guys watched my cast when I was doing professional StarCraft Brood War, but he is actually a former pro Brood War player, I think from MBC after they got disbanded. I, I Don't quote me on that. But he is a former Brood War player, so he's a kind of old, wily vet here. He's 24, 25 years old, and in pro gamer age, that's like a dinosaur. But, um, you know, there's something to be said for experience. And uh, we'll see what happens here. Marine King going in, just roasting up a Zergling that was chilling at his potential third. I wonder if he's thrown up a macro CC yet. No. In fact, he's opted to utilize his double gas to go quick starport and stim pack so he's gonna have very highly mobile ground units but will not have siege mode for some time also kind of like how he's placing the factory there a lot of terrans will um you know put the factory in the base but he's placing it here as like a double wall and i would imagine he'll put a tech lab there and obviously that that does make the tanks when they come out vulnerable as well as the tech lab but with the map control that hellions provide i, I think that's a really good decision and he should get the tech lab down there pretty soon uh, if he wants to play against uh, if he wants to play the standard TVZ style. Also note, uh, he had not really making as many queens as I thought he would. Oh, there we go. He's got five queens. Okay, so most of them were at the south. And uh, queens now really the uh, de facto unit of, 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 of style for Zerg versus Terran. And they're really good at defending most attacks. We'll see how he unfares here as he's got his four queens here. Not fine, but four. Uh, stim coming in though. All oh, those stimmed up marines going to do a lot of damage while they're stim. And the queens and the, ba and the zerglings falling back while they're waiting for Bailey's to morph out. Bailey's coming in and Marine King trying to fall back. And it looks like he gets hit by a couple of, by a beam or two, but great spreading right there. Still has a lot of Marines alive, and now it's up to the Queens to defend by themselves. Transfuse trying to keep them alive, but Marine King on the hunt, and is going to take down a bunch of Queens here. It's Queen hunting season, and he finally saves the rest inside the two medevacs. Oh, that was such good micro by MKP. Um, that was some brilliant micro, and most Terrans I don't think would have been able to pull that off. He, I think he only messed up one time. He let the Baneling connect one time, and and that was the only Baneling that was really cost efficient. The rest of the Banelings, no. You know, most Terrans would have lost all their forces, but not MKP, who was able to not only deal uh, a great trade, but also get all the Queens down. So really, he's way ahead right now after that attack. He's still got the forces alive here, and, uh, you know, hyun has got to be really pissed off. He's got to figure it out. There we go. Gets a connection on the Baneling there, and then uh, MKP trying to be uh, clever there. Drops a unit down to bait the Baneling out. One Zergling here will get destroyed by the the pitchforked in hand SCVs, but you know, Hyun taking a lot of damage, losing all of his queens, and he's got to rebuild them, which kind of hurts his eco a little bit, each queen taking 150 minerals, and it slows down his inject larva timing. In fact, look, without the larva, extra larva, he doesn't have the supply capacity he needs, I'm trying to make five right now, and not only that, but he's also got to save up larva for Mutalisk, says he's got a spire on the way, connects with the Banelings here though. Very nice job by Hyun. And MKP not paying attention on that round, so kind of throws away the slight, I think, edge that he had. But he's still ahead. But the one thing that I think hyun has got to be worried about right now is he doesn't have... Uh, well, let's see how much larva he's got saved up. Okay, so he's got 11 larva saved, and he's got a ton of gas and minerals bank. So you can bet we're going to have a bunch of mutalists coming out right now as they are hatching in their eggs 11 mutas and right now Hyun making a ground based attack at the Terran third where a macro CC is on the way not a bad strike from Hyun who has been able to kinda claw himself back in after taking such a significant loss with his queens if we look at the units lost on the resources tab Zerg still losing more than the Terran and at the front door uh, you know, the and at the main base, I think Ghost uh, Marine King looking really good here. Has great production behind his facilities. Hasn't really taken huge losses this game yet. In fact, on the workers kill tab, only one worker killed so far for, for Marine King. So I guess not as much as you would have thought. So far, a pretty good game as Marine King opens up the rocks in the middle of uh, of the map and. 
you know, I, I like this. If you're ahead as Terran, I, I agree with this. You can make a lot of attacks through the middle, but you have to be careful of flanks through the sides. As Mutalus come in from Hyun, who's going after the missile turret, but it's quickly repaired, mass repaired by all those SCVs, and very good reaction by uh, Marine King. If he had not reacted that quickly, then he would have lost the missile turret, in turn losing a lot of SCVs. Nice job by Marine King to just stay on point. And so far this game, you know, I really look at Marine King and I haven't seen too many holes in his game plan. 2-2 two, two on the way. One vehicle weapons to follow that up as well. Zerg at one flyer attacks on the way, but, you know, the 2-2 two, two isn't even started yet. So Hyun is going to lose the upgrade war momentarily here. Um, and he's going to have to, you know, he's going to have to be careful with these mutilists. Cannot let them just fly in. At taking damage like that, he really doesn't have that many mutas to work with in the first place, currently at 7, but he does have, oh my god, a lot of banelings, what the heck, 47 banelings on the way, and he's flying in, oh, this is so smart, flying in with the mutas through the back to bait the army away from... I guess away from the pocket expansion so he can slam in there or maybe he's going to go after the tanks first because tanks are the counter to banelings that can just take them out so easily. And he unflies in there, wasn't able to take out one of the tanks, but look at how many banelings he's got. He's got 82 banelings right now. This is insane. Meanwhile, there's a drop on the Zerg fourth, but that doesn't matter because there's so many banelings coming in. Oh, all the tanks getting splattered to death. That one tank sieging up in a nice spot to funnel, kind of like sacrificing himself as a meat shield. But the Bailings don't care, they're indiscriminate, as it looks like the Zerg Fort's still under siege, but MKP not even caring about that right now, not even worrying about it, as Bailings are inside his main. He didn't raise the Supply Depot! Oh man, that might have helped, you know, absorb a couple more Bailing shots, and now, uh, Hyun's gotta make up his mind, what is he gonna go after? And he's trying to figure out just that right now, more reinforcements streaming in, Banelings and Zerglings, oh that's a nice patch of SCVs for Hyun, MKP you gotta be careful, oh he loses a, a bunch of SCVs right there, trying to save the tech lab it looked like, uh, the tech lab just inevitably goes down anyway, Zerglings now attacking the supply depot wall, and I don't know if uh, Marine King is going to be able to keep himself alive here, trying to mass repair. This is Marine King's view right now. You guys just constantly hearing your SCVs are under attack. And there's more than that. There's this his base is under attack right now. More Banelings morphing in. Oh my goodness. They get inside. Workers killed skyrocketing to 42 right now. Marine King's only got 35 under 84. Things are looking quite grim for him. He still has the drop over on the bottom right, but he hasn't been able to do much damage with it. Is MKP going to be able to stabilize? The top left expansion is safe thanks to the siege tank. And I cannot believe it. I can't believe it. MKP holds on. For his dear life, that was so close. Uh, 84 Bailing slamming into the hull of his front door, and I cannot believe it. He was able to hold on right there. But the question is, has the permanent damage been done? Uh, he lost about 40 or so SCVs. He's at 40 under 83 right now. Um, you know, this drop over here, I don't think it was too effective in terms of dealing damage. Really, he wasn't paying attention to it the entire time, and now he's going to lose the medevac as well. So Marine King is really bruising, man. He's cruising for a bruising right now. And uh, it looks like he's just going to go for an all-in counterattack, which I totally agree with. He's brought... Well, I don't know if it's all-in, I suppose. Is he making SCVs behind this? Uh, he's upgrading, he's making more marines and tanks, he's not making any SCVs, so I kind of feel like this is just his throwing the kitchen sink, his counter attack here, he feels like he needs to do serious damage to stay in this game, and here we go, the Bailey's coming in, they've got other ideas in mind, and all the SCVs trying to hold the line, but they cannot do it, Vikings coming out as well, but there really isn't any brute lords to deal with, just mutas, and all oh, Hyun just cleans the house one more time, and now the medevacs have to flee for life. Oh my goodness, MKP trying to throw everything he had, and I don't know if that was so successful. The, the one thing I will say for MKP is he's still got a significant upgrade advantage. He's going to have 3-3 momentarily. Zerg has not started 3-3 yet. Zerg hasn't even finished Hive yet, and MKP is reclaiming the pocket expansion. Uh, you know, he's suffering in supply counts, 111 to 142, but you have to remember, a lot of that is because he has less SCVs, so, uh, you know, surprisingly, MKP's still kind of staying in this game with a, with a substantial army, and, you know, he's got that upgrade advantage. 
So, we'll see here. I mean, he, he can certainly still make a game out of this. I love the frontal wall here. It's like a double layer. If you get past the barracks, well, then you've got to get past the SCVs. I would, <laughs> I would just lol if there was a planetary there. You get past both of these, well, guess what? I've got a PF here for your Zerglings, too. Um, and those Zerglings realizing, eh, probably not worth going in. But here comes MKP once again, attacking through the front door. And uh, I don't know, man, that's a lot of Zerglings and Infestors, but I think Hyun might be running out of firepower here, has to retreat the Infestors back. I think he got a couple of good fungals there. But uh, surprisingly, MKP encroaching on Zerg territory here has set up a siege tank line. It's a little thin, just two tanks, but it's better than nothing. One thing he's done very well as well is kept his medevacs alive. So these Marines are quite durable. Um, and uh, of course, he can save them from Baneling connections as well. By the way, 3-3 is starting up as well as Adrenal Glands for Zerg. So these Zerglings are going to be very powerful here, but they run into the Marines. They leak on by both walls. And um, yeah, someone's got to... I guess the walls, while they were good, in theory, someone's got to fire the Architect because they would have a little bit of... A little leaky holes that the enemy can exploit. Here we go. Uh, Hyun still fighting here against MKP, who's trying to set up a, a establishment in the middle of the map, but he gets fungled as the Zerglings run in. Good control by Hyun to keep the Infestors in the back. And the Zerglings and Banelings just going in and wrecking everything underneath. And MKP once again must fall back as Adrenal Glands is momentarily about to finish. There it goes, and it's finished up now. These Zerglings are even stronger than before. Uh, it doesn't look like Hyun got the memo, though, that Adrenal Glands had finished. He could have actually just went in there and, I think, taken out these Marines, along with a couple of good fungals. They were pretty clumped up. Um, but, you know, this is actually still really close, despite MKP taking, you know, a lot of Banelings to the face. I guess he really didn't lose as much as I thought he did. He didn't lose as many SC... Well, he did lose 40 SCVs, but he didn't lose any of his production facilities. He lost some add-ons, but he didn't lose the production key facilities. And he's been able to re-macro, not to mention the mules at this location are just so good for Terran. 2,400 minerals a minute right now, and minerals are the key resource in Terran versus Zerg. Just like in Terran versus Terran, gas not too important until the way way later stages so uh, right now MKP just needs the money to fund more Marines he's making uh, Marauders in transition as well anticipating the ultras which there is an ultra cavern and a greater spire on the way so we're gonna see uh, both brute lords and ultras I guess maybe just uh, I would imagine a couple ultras first and then Brute Lords to round out the army. Too risky to go straight for Brute Lords here. Poor Hyun, he's not that far ahead. He gets a great fungal though. Once again, hitting through. And the 3-3 three, three Cracklings going in and doing what they do best. Wrecking the house. But the tanks combining their firepower with the Marines. Actually able to dispatch the Zerglings before they could really get in there. And start gnawing away at the, at the armor of the Marines. And now, oh no, Hyun with his Infestors. He doesn't have Burrow. Has to sacrifice his Infestors by using Fungal at the last second, you know, kind of like the, 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 the martyrs, being martyrs and doing whatever they could before they died, um, dying for their Zerg over mine, for their hive mind, the religion they believe in. And uh, here comes, here comes Marine King, man. I, I, I don't know, man. Killing all those infestors is a big deal. And he's got to be careful. Can't lose this infestor. It's getting hunted down. It's so close to dying. Comsat comes out, though, as MKP realized he doesn't want to chase too far in as he takes out the creep tumors and it will be content to take out the pocket expansion. Oh my god, is MKP going to win this game after losing 40 something odd SCVs, 55 SCVs total this game. Zergling is coming in, the Crackling is coming for a counterattack, and these SCVs are in a lot of trouble. Only two Marauders here to defend against this and the Stray Marine. Those SCVs are all going to go down oh so quickly and uh, nothing that MKP can do unless he decides not to control them. All right, so the Zerglings end up running into the Marauders instead. Now MKP thinking that he's got this game in the bag. Gonna go for the bottom right expansion. It doesn't look like Hyun's got Brute Lords on the field yet. He's trying to morph uh, five of them, but you know, this is what I'm saying. The Zerg has a significant weakness when they're going Brute Lords. It takes so long to get them out on the field and MKP hit right before Brute Lords came out. And it's really a miracle too, because he didn't have any Vikings, you know? He had a couple earlier on, but they died. And if he had just came a minute later, man, those Brutalers would be out on the on the field right now, and and that would have been big problems for MKP. But as it stands, MKP able to take out two bases here. There are five Brutalers on the map, however, and now he's got to start Viking production immediately. Gets fungal though. Oh, those Metavax gonna go down. 
Looks like they were pretty much empty though, so it's not too significant of a loss. One medevac still alive here is getting fungled down and will barely make it out of there alive as another fungal comes out on those three medevacs. And now the Ultra's going in, but they're such in a terrible position. It's a great concave for Marine King Prime who continues to micro his Marines and tanks back, but he gets fungled. And this is a nasty spot for MKP, but the Ultras are just getting mawed down by the Marines. And now it's just Brute Lord and Fester. MKP just going in with everything he's got, trying to target down the Brute Lords, now going for the Infested Terrans. And I don't believe it. 128 supply to 78. MKP is going to take this game. GG calls TSL Hyun. And that was a really, really good Terran versus Zerg. One of the better ones I've seen with MKP losing what 40 something odd SEVs in the beginning of that huge bailing attack and then making a comeback and somehow some way pulling it out and taking the W in the first game of this set this is a best of three guys I hope you guys enjoyed this cast if you did make sure to check me out I'm on YouTube at HD Starcraft where I you guys can find more Starcraft 2 videos and I'm gonna see you guys in game number two this is HD signing up